Hi, I'm Kendra Little from Red Gates Advocate Team. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can dynamically set up an environment, possibly a QA environment, but it could be any environment you want to use for testing in Azure DevOps with Red Gates SQL clone and SQL change automation. So a little bit about my setup first. I'm just in a VM on my machine and I am using Azure DevOps services. You can do very similar things with Azure DevOps server, the product previously known as TFS. And uh, what I've got set up is I have Red Gates SQL clone set up here. I'll be doing a demo with an image of the Stack Overflow database here. And I've got a Stack Overflow database that I've created an image with. This is the Stack Overflow 2010.bac file that you can download for free on the internet. The kind folks at Stack Overflow, they share data dumps of their database and Brent Ozar has set up the ability to grab backups for those. I think it's really fun for testing. I have a copy of the 2010 version, which is just under nine gigabytes. And right now I just have one clone created for that. The name of my image here is Stack Overflow itself. And I do work in the derp domain under the name Kendar on my test. Now in Azure DevOps, when you're setting this up in Azure DevOps, Redgate, we have extensions for SQL clone so that you can use plugins for this to configure this in a graphic way that's really easy. And when you install the plugin for this, we also have a plugin for SQL change automation, by the way, when you install the plugin for clone, it, it helps you figure out how do you set this up. You create a SQL clone service endpoint. And I'll just show you where that is in Azure DevOps here under pipelines in your settings. I'm in the project settings here. Uh, we have service connections here. And after you install this, I think it's technically called an extension, not a plugin. After you install the extension, if you say, hey, I want to do a new service connection here, when you look at your options for types of service connections, you have a type that is SQL clone server, and it helps you set things up so that when I run uh, op operations on my build server or my deployment server, um, I can actually tell it, okay, here's where SQL clone is and how you can talk to it. So that's just a little quick thing. There's more about the setup in the extension setup itself. So I've got that extension or plugin, whatever you want to call it, installed, uh, as well as the SQL change automation plugin. So let's take a look at my pipelines. I've got here under pipelines, I have a continuous integration uh, pipeline set up here. And then here under, let's make our text a little bigger. So right now I'm just under the uh, pipelines. I've got my continuous integration there. Under releases, I've got a couple different release pipelines. I've got one that I use for pull request automation, but in this one, we're going to look at a uh, release pipeline here. Now, I showed this in a previous video, but we'll just take a quick look here. If I look at my pipeline and I look at my trigger here, I've got a continuous deployment trigger here, and I have this one set up to say include any branches under the releases folder there. So releases slash star is there. So it'll say, I'm gonna create a release every time a new build is available. And I'm gonna look under that releases branch. So I'm gonna go now into my repo here. We'll look back a little later to dig in more to what that means. I'm gonna go into my branches and under releases here, you know, I've got a couple of these already. But let's say I've made some code changes since these. These are past releases I've done. And now I want to create a new release. Well, I'm branching off of master. So I want to do, I'm, I'm right there on master. I clicked the dot, 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 and I'm new in a new branch, doing a new branch. And I'm going to do this releases. We'll call this sprint 0003, right? It is based on master. So all of my stuff that actually has been merged into master maybe from feature branches that I've been using. You know, maybe I've been using pull requests to make sure that only really quality deployable stuff gets into master, but I'm gonna base this on master. If I wanna link work items here, I totally can, right? To say, if I'm using work items and I wanna really document, hey, what is the stuff we've been working on in here? I can do that too. I only have one work item. <laughs> so now we'll go ahead and create that branch. When I go back now and I look at my pipelines, hey, we have a build running here because I do want to get a recent build for what's happening here. When I look at my properties of my pipeline here, 
and I need to actually edit my pipeline to look at it. If I look at loading, loading, if I look at my triggers on the triggers tag, you'll notice that I also say I am going to go ahead and do a build whenever uh, anything shows up in that release, release branch specification. I'm gonna go and head into my releases pipeline there and notice that it isn't running yet. We're waiting for that build to finish and then we're gonna pick up that build and we're gonna pass it into the release pipeline. So my pipeline uh, here is still running. Let's take a look and see, see what's going on in there. We can look at the stages that it's passing through. It's using a build task for SQL change automation to say, I need to make sure that this code is valid. I am going to make sure that the stuff we're gonna deploy all checks out and create an artifact for it. So we can see now that these things have all been successful and we can also uh, take a look at, let's edit this pipeline. It's now moved on, but we can still take a look at it. We have um, finished that there. You can see that I have the SQL change automation uh, build task set up there and I've told it the information about the project that it's building, how to do the build and all that good stuff. And it's publishing the artifact. All right, over in my releases now, uh, we have now kicked off that release pipeline. It said, okay, we did that uh, build. And notice that it is working on sprint underscore zero, 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 three. Uh, I have done this in the past. As you'll notice here, these are past ones that I've run where I did that and then I deleted the branch after cleaning up. This is the one that we're running right now. So let's take a look at what's happening here and how it's dynamically creating the environment. Editing the pipeline, we can see it's passing in that artifact. I already showed you that trigger on there that says I'm gonna pick up anything in the releases. And now when I look at the clone and deploy, here's where the magic is happening. The first thing I'm doing is I used the plugin for SQL clone to say, hey, I wanna go ahead and create a clone and I'm gonna name it stack overflow underscore branch and then I'm gonna name it the build source branch name. If you wanna do this with variables, you totally can. You can add in a PowerShell step right before this and you can uh, set the name to be whatever you want dynamically. I'm just using a built-in variable of the source branch name. So what this is doing is it's using SQL clone here. If I refresh here, oh, I didn't even need to refresh. Notice that now there are two clones here. It has created a lightweight clone. And if I click on this, hey, check it out. We've got one for branch sprint 003 that has just been created and it is only 44.1 megabytes. It's not nearly 10 gigs because it's using data virtualization to create a lightweight clone that is still readable, still writable, but is only going to take up space as we change things on that clone. It will still act like a SQL Server database. It'll still get to use the buffer pool. It'll still get to use the optimizer, all of that stuff but it's really lightweight and also very, very fast to create. So first we create that clone and I have said, hey, um, I want this to be rerunnable. If I rerun this, I wanna delete that clone and recreate it. That is completely an option for you. You don't have to do that. In theory, I'm only actually going to re-trigger this for this release branch if I need to reset something, right? So uh, you can control how you wanna do that. You get a few more options here as to what you want to do. It's pretty darn straightforward. Now, SQL clone, uh, if you use data masking with this, you do have the option to go ahead and you can say for this image, at the time you create this image here, you can apply data masking to that so that the data that's being cloned is by design always going to be safe because the image itself has had stat static data masking applied to it. So that doesn't just have to be a copy of production if I don't want it to be. Uh, if I want to apply a template to that image, if I want to do something, let's uh, look at this little uh, informational thing here. A template allows you to say, I want to run some SQL commands when I'm creating the clone. So maybe there's something about this image that I want to modify for some environments. 
I can use templates when I'm creating the clone to say, hey, run these T-SQL commands so that you modify this image automatically when you create this environment. So if you have certain things that get done with certain environments, you can just build that into your pipeline so you don't have to manually connect and run those scripts. My next step is to say I want to create a release artifact against that clone environment. So I now am using the Redgate SQL change automation release plugin to say that I want to go ahead and export this release artifact on the, the build server where I'm running this. I'm going to go ahead and delete files in the export folder. I'm using a lot of the defaults here. I don't have any filters I'm using. There may be times when you want to use a filter. So that can be very, very handy. And I just tell it, hey, here's that database. Notice that I can still use that variable and say, um, OK, I named this on the build source branch name. I want to go ahead and use Windows Auth and connect to it. And I am going to essentially, in this step, what the release artifact is doing is figuring out, OK, what are the commands that I need to deploy against this? This will work whether you're using a SQL change automation project or a SQL source control project. Works a little differently behind the scenes, but it creates that release artifact. And I love having these around. There may be some cases where you want to review them before you actually deploy them, right? But even if I am automatically deploying it as I am here in the next step, I like having it around because I have a history of OK, exactly what did we deploy, and what does the code look like, and what is a summary of it? I might want that later in my process, or I might just want it to refer to later. Now, in this next step here, I am deploying the release artifact uh, to my target database. So we can see here that I am deploying this to my target database. And that's all there is. Now, if you want to get fancier, you absolutely can. This is just the essentials. If you want to also deploy application components to that environment and have a whole working environment, you can add that in, right? This is uh, the base plugins for the database. But of course, the magic of pipelines is that we can do much more and combine both database and application level tasks in these pipelines. So let's take a look here at releases. We can see now that release 22 was successful there. And let's take a look over at our SQL Server. I'm just going to open Management Studio here. And let's take a look at that database that it created and deployed to there. In SQL Server Management Studio, uh, there we go, opening up. I just need to connect to the instance where I had that target database. So I happen to know that it's on beep beep dev. If you have multiple environments you're deploying to, you'll want to have a, a some automation that helps people understand, OK, here's where we deploy different releases to there. But mine is on this dev instance here. And we can see, hey, check it out, stack overflow underscore branch underscore sprint 003. I'm going to do a new query window there. And SQL Prompt would like me to know that it has new features there. We'll take care of that in a little bit. But I can take a look at, I'm going to take a look at my migration log table there. And I'm going to order uh, my results by the, let's take a look at the sequence number column there. Now, I did sequence number ascending. <laughs> but if you ever want to check what has been deployed and what order was it deployed in, you can take actually see that in that migration log table. I can see here that my most recent deployments here are these changes because the project I'm deploying here is a migrations first approach with SQL change automation. I authored my changes in Management Studio in SQL change automation and then committed them to source. You could might also be authoring your changes in SQL source control and then deploying them with SQL change automation as well. So this is a quick introduction to how you can dynamically set up. Let me bring back my pipeline here. You can dynamically set up the ability to create and deploy to environments in pipelines. And this is a great way to be able to quickly set up and say, OK, we're ready to create a release for this. We want to go ahead and create a fresh environment for this. And for some reason, I'm, I'm not clicking on the stage right here. I want to actually show the tasks. But Azure DevOps doesn't seem to want to 
Um, is it is it possible to click wrong? <laughs> So I'll go ahead and refresh my page there, and now I can see the tasks. Uh, these are your essential tasks for creating the environment with SQL provision using SQL clone, and then deploying the changes with SQL change automation. Thanks so much for joining me today for this quick video. I'm Kendra Little from the Advocate team at Redgate. Bye, folks.